Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Stacy, and on this channel, we're pretty much gonna talk about everything that you can think of. That's like, that's what it's gonna be. <clears throat> and today, I actually wanted to talk to you about spiritual awakenings um, and how you could be going through one right now. If you're seeing my channel, chances are you may be going through a spiritual awakening and it's okay. You're not going crazy. You're not insane. There is nothing at all wrong with you. Actually, you're going sane. <laughs> it's, it's weird, I know. And it's hard to explain it because nobody really talks about spiritual awakenings. Like they don't really, I mean more now people are on YouTube and things like that. And they're trying to get to the heart of the matter and what's really going on. So here's some things that I found out on my spiritual awakening path and what I found works, doesn't work. And this is day two of my 90 day video um, plan. So every day for 90 days, at least, I'm going to be making a video. And it doesn't matter what the video is about, um, I'm just gonna make the video. And today I am basically talking about spiritual awakening. But here's the thing. You may not realize that you're actually going through a spiritual awakening when it's happening. You may think that you're depressed. You may think that things are going wrong and everything is against you. You may think that. And it's okay because in a way, the universe is conspiring for you to do what you're ultimately meant to do. And that could be anything. Like you could be meant to help people get healthy, help people find health, wellness, and um, the, their inner strength. You could be meant to help people learn self-love or how to learn by you learning how to love yourself and showing other people how you're doing that. That could be your gift to the world. Anyway, whatever you are called to do, that is your gift that's it whatever you're called to do that's what you're supposed to be gifting to the world anyway back to spiritual awakening so when I first realized that I was going through my spiritual awakening I have already been through multiple traumatic events in my life so there is no shame in my game I had been basically tortured by a family member for 10 years of my life and people ignored what I was saying. They ignored um, what I told them. And I understand that all people can do now is say that they're sorry and really me stepping into my forgiveness was part of my spiritual awakening process. So for me in spiritual awakening and basically waking up to the fact that I am a divine infinite being living a temporary human existence. I am a spiritual being. I will go on after this body goes away and I will continue to go on, but in a different form, in a different aspect, as a different being, as a light being, as someone else. And right now here on this planet, I am meant to kind of lead the way for other people to have an easier transition into spirituality, to have an easier time going through what they're going through. Now listen, some of us went through some really, really hard dark nights of the soul and we cannot negate what some spiritual warriors have already gone through. There is no shame in anyone's game I've been through three dark nights of the souls myself personally. I had one when I was 16-ish and had gotten out of the uh, toxic situation that I was in from the time I was 6 to 16. And I had a epiphany. I also tried to 
unalive myself, among other things. Um, and in that, I, I'm still here, so. Then when I was 35, I lost my son's father to a heart attack. He passed away and he was 35 too. And I was left with a 15 year old boy and a nine year old boy to raise on my own after that. And it was hard, it was hard. And I went through a dark night of the soul then where I could barely get out of bed. I wondered what was the point of the world? What was the point of the universe? Why would a God, if there was a God, do this to me? And I still wonder that sometimes, I really do. But I also realized had it not been for my struggles, had it not been for my trials and my tribulations, I would not be the person I am today, so willing to help other people, so wanting to add value to the world, to spread love and peace and harmony and happiness and joy in a world full, so filled with hate and anger and violence and, and so much discontent. And so many people don't feel worthy. And anyway, so... My second dark night of the soul is when I lost my son's father. And I lost myself for probably a good five years. I was also living in my grandmother's basement with my two kids and there were mice everywhere. And this was not the best um, environment for me or my kids. It was toxic. And there's one thing that I can say, if you have the choice, don't move in with family. Don't move in with family. It's not worth the relationships that it'll strain. And it's not worth the pain that that has to cause um, other people. If you can help it, I could not help it. Um, it was that or I ended up in a shelter with my sons. So I took out of the cold, not in the shelter, and lived with my grandmother. Well, lived in my grandmother's basement, really. Um, that's another topic for another time. I also had a spiritual awakening based on that situation as well. So while I was there. I had lost my son's father and all of that happening. And I had a really, really deep dark night of the soul where for five years, I basically didn't do anything at all. I was in bed. I could barely take showers. I didn't cook. I didn't clean. I gained hundreds of pounds. I weighed over 336 pounds um, at that time. I couldn't move and I ended up dislocating my shoulder and the job that I ended up getting, I ended up getting hurt on. So my life was a mess and I lost my apartment. I lost my son's father. I lost my everything. I lost everything. I lost my dignity, my sanity, my health, everything. I lost everything. And then I had a spiritual awakening. I started looking for ways out. I started looking for ways up. I started looking for a way out of the darkness, out of the dark night of the soul. And this whole time that I'm going through this and I'm struggling and I'm being told I'm nothing, I'm being told I'm worthless, I'm being told this by family members that are supposed to love me, love my kids, and and this is what I'm being told. And I'm also being told, oh, well, I love you, but I don't like you. And I'm being told that over and over again. So I started to not like myself, and not to mention the 10 years of actual legitimate torture that I endured as a very young child. Like, I already hate myself. Like, I already hate myself. That's where I was. 
And then now I have family adding on to that self-hate. This is not a good place for me at that time. This was not a good place. I was, I was gaining weight rapidly and I was becoming someone that I didn't recognize at all, at all. And I hated myself for it. I could barely take care of my kids. Like I was, I felt like nothing. And then I had another spiritual awakening and realized that in demoting myself to nothing, I really essentially promoted myself to everything. See, how could I be nothing yet responsible for all the problems that I was facing? How could I be nothing yet responsible for everyone else's happiness in my near vicinity? How could I be nothing yet responsible for all this? I couldn't be nothing and still responsible for everyone else's health, safety, and well-being. That just wasn't possible. So either I was nothing or I was everything. And that's the way my mind kind of worked. And here's the thing. You are nothing, yet you are everything. You are nothing. You are insignificant as a being. Yet you are the most significant being in your immediate vicinity. You hold the power to change people's lives. You hold the power to change your own life. And if you, the only life you change is yours for the better, you've done an amazing thing. Because where you are nothing in the cosmos, cosmos in the grand scheme of things, it's not that you're nothing. You're just a small speck on the radar. That's what I mean. Not that you're nothing, that you mean nothing. But here is that small speck, that small speck can create amazing changes in one life, two lives, even three, maybe, maybe you touch four lives and those four lives touch four more lives. And in the grand scheme of things, the four lives touch four lives, touch four lives, touch four lives, touch four lives, and it keeps on going and going and going. So your positive impact on that one life, that two lives, those three lives, those four lives, your positive impact on that soul created a ripple effect. So in spirituality, we are divine beings inhabiting human bodies. We are everlasting divine beings living a temporary human existence. And when you wake up to the fact that you are the co-creator in this reality, you are the universe living in yourself. You are everything and everything is you. You will never call yourself nothing again. Because the fact that you felt like nothing means that you're everything. You're everything this world needs. You're everything this world needs. And please, please don't forget your beauty. You're an amazing gift. And you have amazing gifts to share with this world. Now go out. Let people know what you've got to share with them. It's what you're being called to do. Go do it. And in the spiritual awakening, you don't have to be religious to be spiritual. Being spiritual means that you are one with yourself, one with the earth, one with all the beings that inhabit this beautiful planet. Being spiritual means that you are guided by your heart more than your mind. Your ego doesn't tell you what to do anymore. Your heart and your divine soul does. Now go on, be happy. You create your own happiness. You are a divine being living this temporary human existence. Go forth and make yourself happy because that's what you were put on this earth to do. To show people how to make themselves happy. That's what we're here for. Have a great night, day, 
afternoon, whatever it is where you are, know that you're worth it and you're worthy and you always were. And peace, have a great one.